And joining us on Skype right now is Michael Adani. And Michael is the Vice President Nukes Wuhan Live from China. Good evening. Oh, good morning. We understand it's morning in China. Good morning, Michael, if you can hear me. Good morning. Good right. morning from Wuhan. Um, we know it's been very difficult. I mean, this is the particular week when really issues on coronavirus has dominated news around the world. Tell us how you are managing where you are. Here you are still quarantined, Michael. Yeah, we are still in the house, but we try to stay in touch with our friends and loved ones through WhatsApp and WeChat. We check on each other. We try to meet each other's needs through self, uh, selflessly sharing the letter that we have and also trying to stay positive. Mm. The last time we spoke, you shared with us that you wanted some, uh, you wanted to contact the Ghana Embassy in China so they would also carry out some, uh, to airlift some of your students back home. Have you been able to establish contact with the Embassy in China? Yeah, um, please, we have been in touch with the Embassy right from day one, just that we felt like they were being a bit too slow of course, because they take instructions from Ghana. And the final decision also resides in the gov uh, government officials, especially the president. So now, as it stands, it's been two weeks. Now we are going into the third week. We are still indoors. We're running out of supplies. Our, our people are depressed. People are experiencing mental breakdown and all that. That's why we're calling on the government, especially the president, the speaker of parliament, the chief justice, I mean, the council of state, and religious <coughs> leaders, that we know they are the conscience of the nation. They should hear our, our cry for help and come to our aid. We know that they are able to do it. They promise and they deliver. And they are our fathers. We believe in their ability and their capabilities to come to our aid. We cannot continue to stay indoors for 14 days counting. School reopening has been postponed indefinitely. We have been told this semester we'll be studying online. We cannot study under this environment. We cannot study under this environment. We need an environment that is conducive for academic work. And most of us are also preparing to graduate this year in June. We have only four months to submit our thesis. So we really want the government to do something about this. So, okay, but Michael, so the last time you spoke to the Ghana Embassy in China about plans to airlift you back home, what exactly did they tell you? They told us that they are doing the best that they can, but then the final decision is that of the government back home. They take orders from their principals, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So they, they kept postponing. We've been having a series of meetings as we watch other uh, citizens from African countries being airlifted. And the more we stay here, the more exposed we are to the, to the uh, virus. We are running out of supplies, and we have to go out and join long queues in order to buy basic necessities. But the precautionary measures also tell us to avoid crowded places. There are only few supermarkets that are open, and we are a city of 11 million people. So we see some of these measures be counterproductive. So we either have to go out with the fear of getting infected, or we stay home and starve. Right. So, Michael, um, before we finish, we understand recently the Foreign Affairs uh, Ministry sent some money for your upkeep. Have you received the money? Okay, so we, we, we are grateful. The money they sent is 50,000 renminbi. And the amount... 50,000 what? Received, dollars or cities or yuan? In yuan, renminbi. Okay. That, that is roughly like 2,800 USD. And we are over 250 student in Wuhan. We all understand the standard of living is not the same as in the one in, in, in Ghana. And also, because of the situation here, we cannot even buy the staff in bulk. And nobody risks going out to distribute across 22 universities in a big city like Wuhan. So we, we have received the money, but we don't know how to go about it. People are having genuine fears and concerns. Nobody wants to go out for fear of possible uh, in fact, we are here, we see some of our colleague students being taken by ambulance to hospitals. There are a lot of things we see that we cannot really speak on the radio or on, 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 on TV, especially as I'm, my face is being shown. We are grateful to our host, but we think that they are currently overwhelmed and something needs to be done. So what we are calling 
we are requesting for is that our government should come to our aid. They shouldn't have to set us up to say things that we are not authorized to say. Right. Um, Michael, I don't know, we're grateful for your time. And Michael is the vice president of NUCS in Wuhan, in, in China. And uh, he is part of the students who have been quarantined in China, trying to protect them from uh, getting exposed to the coronavirus. They're calling on the government of Ghana to arrange to airlift Ghanaian students who have been quarantined back home. Thank you, Michael, for speaking to us.